with your grace. Every gift you give me, let it not last still long. Stir it up so we may see you shine to me like the sun breaks a new day. On the roses, fresh anointing, my life is song. Your love composes, Jesus, holy one. I come to realize. Welcome to Grace for Me. The title Grace for Me, the theme Grace for Me, the focus Grace for Me came from when I had brain surgery. I had two brain surgeries. In 2010, I had a brain surgery, and it was the size of a grapefruit. But God brought me through in three days, I went home. And then in 2012, I had brain surgery again, and God brought me through that. And I tell you what, and after they took care of my body, after the surgery, after two or three days later, I went home again. But the prayers of a, the fervent prayers of a righteous man availed much. After our bishop and our pastor prayed for us, we came out victorious by the blood of Jesus. And he brought me out to help you come out. This show is geared to help you understand that God loves you. And his grace is sufficient for you. And he will bring you out. He didn't bring me out because I was so good. And he didn't bring me out because of who I was or what people think I am. He brought me out for his glory, for his purpose, his purpose, my destiny. So God wants to bring you out. God has something for you. He has a promise that he's given you and now he wants to deliver that to you. If you would just trust God, if you would stay tuned to us on Grace For Me, you will find that God's grace for you is the same as it was for me and much more. God wants to bring you out. Thank you for tuning in, and we have many more subject matters that we're going to deal with. God bless you. Today in Grace For Me, we're going to talk about food addictions, why we use food for our comfort in the areas of peace, joy, strength, courage, hope. Food can become an idol in our life and cause us to turn from our God and to turn to it. But God is going to deliver us today from the addiction of food, the desire of food, and set our hearts in a place of desire for him. And I promise you today, you will hear the truth and nothing but the truth, and it will free you from food addictions and what they do and cause you to turn away from God. Because if we will put our trust in the Lord, if we will have our confidence in him, if our faith will rely upon him, then we will have everything we need and food will not become replacement for God. Now, stay tuned to Pastor Iris Divine as she talks about how God brought her out mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and physically from food addiction. God bless. Pastor Iris, welcome to Grace For Me. I am so glad that you're here. I'm excited. I'm overwhelmed by your presence. God is so amazing. I remember, uh, as you know, the topic today is addiction, and you had a food addiction. And I remember when you were in sizes 34 to 36 and how God brought you so far. And I know that um, you would use food, you told me, to um, overcome pain and hurt and the suffering that you went through. But even then, you was a class act. Oh my goodness, you always dressed to the T and you're looking awful, just awesome and beautiful today. Thank you. you look very beautiful as always. Pastor Iris, explain to us how you began with your addiction with food. I began my addiction with food uh, out of my pain. I would just emotional eat. So it was a, a real struggle. Actually, I didn't even know I was doing it most of the time. Uh, a lot of times I didn't even know really that I was in pain or uh, it was just an answer to stress. So I just ate and ate it, and it, it, it just did, it could have been anything. Just whatever I could find that was right there, ready and accessible. And not to the point that I was thrown up, but just to the point where it was constant, constant eating, constant eating, constant eating. And it just pretty much drowned out my pain or whatever I was going through at the particular moment. Uh, and then I kind of realized that, hey, you got a problem here. Uh, at 350 pounds, there was a problem. 
Amen. I understand that because um, food can be comforting, especially right. when it's your favorite food. And you, before you know it, you can eat almost a half a cheesecake and not realize you ate it. I know I would take one slice, you know, girl. Right. And girl, I'd be on two, three, four, five, right. before I know it. And then I went through a yo-yo dieting thing where I right. would gain and lose, gain and lose. And it, and I, it didn't dawn on me either that uh, the addiction to food was... I was wanting comfort from the pain and the struggle. Anytime uh, someone was going through my family, a death in our family, or somebody hurt me or offended me, I would turn to food. And didn't realize I was turning to food instead of turning to God, I would turn to food. So uh, with that being said, I also understand that you have a ministry. Uh, give us some uh, insight on Divinely One Ministries. Divinely One Ministries is simply a ministry that uh, helps uh, bring deliverance to those who are who have been mentally abused who have been physically abused and then who also suffer through some addic addictions specifically food addiction because a lot of those mental and physical issues that you have you tend to drown out with the food so that's how those all come together uh, in that manner well, you know, Pastor Iris, we are ministers of the gospel, and even as ministers, people expect you not to have a problem. That's right. And what they do not know that there is always a story to the battle. Amen. And so in the past, you've dealt with a lot of uh, mistreating, people mistreating you, lying on you, just right. degrading you, putting you down, because they do not know where it began and why why it was happening can you uh expound upon that i think initially <clears throat> pardon me being at 350 plus um and i'm gonna say plus because i never actually got my highest weight it was always over 350. people have a tendency to judge you based on what they see the initial mm -hmm. appearance mm -hmm. so a lot of people rejected me just on me walking through the door at 350 wow. plus pounds without knowing my story, without knowing who I am, and just initially uh, having a perception of me based on what they saw. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, I kind of had to get past that and uh, mentally change my outlook on life and uh, people would, you know, abuse you because of what they thought you appeared to be. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times in, in ministry uh, and in my position as a first lady, uh, I had a tendency not to speak because, you know, you have to carry the image Absolutely. and you don't want to offend anybody or you don't want to be judged harshly by anybody. So you have to be quiet. So a lot of times I would just take it and uh, take all those burdens and all that abuse and all the the uh, mental uh, darts, if you will, yes. and take it back home. And I would drown those cares out with food. You know, Satan will use uh, anything, individuals, situations, circumstances, to put you in a dark place and make you think that you can never come out of it. I, I do know that you at one time was married to a, a man of the cloth, if you will, and you were first lady and carried the, also the ministry of preaching the gospel. But you were in a position where people would always judge the book by the cover, but they never got to know the substance that was in the book right. and so god had brought you to a place of deliverance can you uh, expound upon that please well i think what i kind of went through a transition of at the beginning of the year uh, my prayer and you have to be careful what you pray for because even though i prayed it and thought that i was ready I wasn't exactly ready for the results. And my prayer for the beginning of the year, everybody makes the New Year resolution, for whom this was uh, approximately three years ago, was to expose the lies and bring forth the truth. And he did just that. I wasn't really expecting to see what he showed me. But obviously I was ready for it because he gave it to me just like I asked for it. And upon that, he began to show me who I was. He began to show me who those were around me. Um, and so along the way, um, I had to, to cut some things because everybody can't go on this journey with you. Yes. And so we, I lost a few, I gained a few, Amen. but at the end of the day, I came forward like pure gold and, yes. and God began to change me and work on my, my mind mentally. Uh, he gave me a, a choice. I had a, a choice and I chose to serve him no matter what. And if I had to do it alone, I had to do it alone. So now I'm alone and 
you know, uh, I'm moving forward. He, he mentally changed me. And then after he mentally changed me, he began to work on my spirit man. So that's why I say the mental addictions and, and things like that. He began to work on my spirit man. And when my spirit man began to heal and, and is still going through a healing process, uh, he began to heal me uh, on the food side of it. So he began to show me what my addiction is. Uh, he began to show me what I needed to do to, to mentally get away from that. And I began to just love on him, and I made him my first love. Amen. Somebody told me, somebody told me right here sitting <laughs> next to me, me, that would be you. <laughs> somebody told me, get back to your first love. And I got tired of hearing it. I'm going to tell you the truth. So <laughs> you would say, do you hear me? I hear you. You got to get back to your first love. And I had to recommit and reorganize and restructure and, yeah. and most of all, reprioritize my life and make him first. And now that I've made him first, God does nothing but get the glory out of everything that goes on in my life. I'm amazed at the things that he's doing yeah. uh, in my life and the lives of my children and those who are walking with me. With all of that suffering that you went through, you are a psalmstress, yes. you're a writer, you, you, you're, uh, uh, um, uh, you can uh, play the instruments, preach the gospel, you're a great teacher, a wonderful mother. How many daughters you have? I have four daughters, uh, physical, now spiritual, it's a whole bunch, of, I call them tag -alongs. <laughs> I got a bunch of tag uh, boys and girls, and I got babies that, that grew up with me in ministry, and it's, it's babies everywhere. So I got a lot of them, but four, four physical uh, birth daughters. Birth daughters. Mm -hmm. I remember you uh, saying to me at one time in our, our time, what well, people don't know that you're a prayer warrior and yes. you're a worshiper. Right. You're a praise and worship leader at your church, and, yes. uh, and you're doing a lot of things for the kingdom. But what really impressed upon me and stayed with me is the, the statement, I have a point to prove, yes. because Satan had used every door and prostituted your ministry, and that was the only way that you could connect and, and stay close to something that was pulling you so far away from God. Yes. So I love the fact that you now determine in your mind, heart, soul, body, and spirit that all of it belongs to Jesus. Right. And now the devil's horrified and God has been glorified. Amen. Amen. I love the title, uh, How Did Divinely Ministry Come About? Tell me how that came about. Divinely World Ministries, um, pretty much uh, coming through a, a divorce um, and... I just had, like I said, I had to reprioritize and make him first. And so there was no sense in me saying that I'm no longer divine. No, nope, I'm still divine. Amen. I'm going to always be divine. Amen. But now I'm divinely one. That's right. And I'm connected and married to him. He's, he's my husband <laughs> mate right now. He's my everything right now. Amen. And he's my number one. So I am divinely one. And in that, <clears throat> a lot of people have to learn. And this is also kind of tied into uh, people who have gone through divorce or that type of thing. Uh, that you can make it on your own. You put God first, and he will meet the need. You know, I don't have to go look out for a man. He, God said he'll go find me. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. He's Amen. coming. Wherever Amen. he is, he's coming. Amen. But in the meantime, right now, mm -hmm. I'm divinely one. Amen. And that's where that came. That's a beautiful title because it not only expresses your relationship with Jesus Christ, it expresses that you are patiently waiting for God, and you come, become from... Uh, you know the story of Joseph from the pit to the palace. Right. You're on your way to the palace and your boy ass is on his way. Yeah. And you're no longer bound by any addiction to food. Right. That divorce did something totally different. It did the opposite effect. You know, I, I, I can't, it, it transitioned you and transformed you to who God designed you to be. Right. It was meant for evil, but it was, it was meant for evil, but it turned out for your good. Amen. It worked for your good. Like the Bible says, everything works together for the good of us who love God Amen. and called according to his purpose. Amen. And I'm here as a witness to what I seen God do. I saw God uh, give you furniture, Amen. new looking furniture. People just set it out. I saw people give you money and I saw people, God was just touching, go give my daughter this, go take care of her, make sure everything right. take, give the daughters and, and taking care of your children and providing for you transportation. And God is giving you two cars now. And you're just right. blessed beyond measure. Amen. God is amazing. Yes, Obedience do bring forth blessings. Yes, and I thank God for your testimony because yes. the food would have you like uh, when you, I know for experience being a Addicted to food, and I thank God that my.
my deliverance is here now and I'm not addicted anymore. Um, I remember when you, um, we talked about when it hurt so bad that we would go and get our favorite shakes or our favorite mocha, whatever. We didn't drink and drug and we didn't do all the other things, but the addiction is an addiction. And so I remember and how the food was a drug, was a drug. Right. And absolutely. And I remember how when you would eat, you didn't eat like, and what people need to know, it wasn't a, a, a pig out. It wasn't like you piled your plate up and they don't understand that's not the type of addiction. Right. This addiction is, is where when I heard instead of going to God, I went that's to right. food and now you're going back to your first love. You have went back and now you're calling on him. You're not depending on a man and you're not right. depending on things, you're not situation or circumstances to fulfill the void in you. Right. You go to the void filler. Amen. Like the lady at the well, sis. That's right. The lady at the well, she had, the, Jesus said, yeah, you got five husbands and the one you got ain't yours. And she realized that that emptiness in her, no one could fulfill it like Jesus. Right. And not only did you help, I help you, but you helped me too to understand that there is a void down and deep inside of us. And we're looking for something or someone to fill it for us. And I'm so glad that you are here today. What is the inspiration behind divine ministry, divine one, divinely one ministry? The inspiration, what we want to do is we want to, people to be delivered from their addictions, from their low self-esteem. Stop believing the lies of the devil mm -hmm. and, be, and, and come forth as a pure vessel of God uh, to, to be able to do whatever it is that you're called Amen. to do. Um, um, I want to bring my pain, I want to make my pain positive. Right. And for the kingdom, for the upbuilding of his kingdom. Not only that, but everything I do, I do for the glory of God. Yes. Literally, I, I, whether I sing, whether I'm cooking, whether I'm working, whatever it is, I want everything to be done for his glory. Amen. At the end of the day, because we, we, we have a, a goal that we're trying to get to, and I'm trying to get to heaven, and ain't nothing going to stop me. Nothing. Not right. one thing. Nobody, mm -hmm. no food, no addiction. I have to be about my father's business and, and and it's a hard lesson to learn but you've got to do it you know and, and in all of that in order to do this the one thing that i had to learn out of all of it is that i have to trust god it's so easy to say god i'm going to trust you because a lot of people say that every day and then they turn around and they go on and do what yes. they want to of their own free will mm -hmm. but you have got to say god i'm going to trust you and every time Thank every you. single time and you're a witness to this just like you said every single time that I was a, a fearful about doing things on my own. I don't have a husband. I don't have this. I can't change my own tire. I can't put my oil in. Every time that I thought that I needed somebody to help me, mm -hmm. I said, God, I trust I you, trust to, do you to do it. I got to trust you to yes, do it. And yeah. every single time, yeah. did he come through? Yes, he did. Every, every single, single time, time, he would show up and show out. Yes. And, it, and he made himself known. Uh, not only for me, but he did it openly. Oh, he I did know. it where my children could see that yes. my mother's saying something here. And not only she's saying something, but we're seeing it in action. And God is so good. He shows himself mighty and he shows himself strong. He's an awesome God. Yes, and is. so that's me. I got a point to prove. That's I got beautiful. a point to prove. And that point is that God is awesome and that he will take care of you. He's your sustainer. He is making your priority. Amen. And he will make you his priority. Amen. And, and, and we have power over these addictions. Amen. And that's what the devil don't want us to know. Right. So he makes us think we're fighting people and things. And the Lord said to us two things. One, we don't wrestle with flesh that's and blood. Right. But spiritual weakness in that's high right. places and no weapon that's formed shall prosper right. we have to lean on the word of god and mm -hmm. and i and like in our prayer time we we talk about you know you'll say to me girl i had to go in this morning mm -hmm. i needed to i had that time and it's not how long you're in there it's going in period and, right. and feeling the presence of the lord because we know that's why this this ministry is called grace for me mm -hmm. it's god's grace for me it's right. his favor on me mm -hmm. favor ain't fair is it it's not true. it's not just fair. not fair uh, and I want to ask you, Pastor Iris, just how much weight, if you don't mind telling uh, our viewing all, audience, how much weight did you really lose? So far, at last count, and I had to count recently, at last count, about 190 pounds. Wow. 190 And pounds. tell them again where you came from. I was at 350 plus, and I'm going to say plus because when I would go to the doctor, mm -hmm. I would get on the scale, and it was a 350 scale, and it would go funk, and he would write 350 plus, plus. Plus, Amen. I never actually got my heaviest weight, but going from 350 to what I am today at 160, that's 190 pounds. 
And you know, I really want you to clear this up because I know uh, our viewers may be thinking, well, what happened if she lost that weight? And even though you had gastric bypass, and that's, uh, did I say it right? You said it right. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that that was easy because, see, I walked with you through this. And that's what people need to know. Oh, well, she did this. It was still a discipline that had to take place. Exactly. Can you uh, expound upon that, please? I surely can. The thing is, is people say, well, she took the easy way out. She took the... No, it it was a life or death decision. Yeah. Uh, I had the surgery, but that's that's not even the half of it. You gotta survive the surgery. Then once you survive the surgery, you have to mentally get in your mind uh, that you're going to not eat and you're going to eat a certain type of thing. You're gonna change, it's gotta change. So before I ever had the surgery, in my mind, I was already ready uh, to have the surgery and to get myself together to not be addicted to food and that's you know that's when you really know if you're addicted to food or not because i had grieved i had to grieve food i cried because there were certain things i couldn't eat i cried because i i wouldn't even really be hungry i just see it there and want it because i was addicted to it so i had to actually find other things to do and i'm gonna tell you how I, how i got past this I would see things or i would make dinner for my children knowing i couldn't eat certain things and i would just grieve I, I just go in the room and cry and then that's when i would turn turn that negative into a positive i would begin to pray i would begin to worship i begin to go in i mean in and that's how my relationship got closer okay. to god so if you want to say that i still am addicted i'm addicted to jesus Hallelujah. at the end of the day because i had to switch that addiction you don't want to normally change one addiction for another which people tend to do that's a, another Thing that you don't want to do whether you know people have a food addiction then they go to another addiction whether it be sexual whether it be shopping whether because you know we can shop now mm -hmm. but you've got to be careful not to switch one addiction for another but this one is a good addiction I can be addicted to Christ all day long mm -hmm. and so that's how I begin to get over my food addiction I begin to make him my number one priority and you know because I know people have said well she took the easy way out but what they don't know you have to fast those first two weeks and you have to discipline yourself That's and right. eat certain things mm -hmm. and then after that a lot of people didn't make it through this because the addiction would take over and they would eat till they hurt themselves right. and so it takes great mental and physical and spiritual discipline to right. conquer this and that's what people don't know and it has to be uh, a not I want to be a skinny thing right. you know it's got to be I want to be a healthy thing exactly. and so even and don't forget I also had remember in 2004 I had the lap band yes and I lost 150 pounds mm -hmm. and gained it all back that's true gained it all back so you can't really say that it failed but my mind wasn't ready right was not together so how do you gain 150 pounds back and you've already had some type of gastric surgery wasn't ready so the thing is, is you know mentally i was prepared for this time uh the, you know and i didn't do it without consulting you know Amen. the lord first That's i said is right. this what you want me to do is this what we're gonna do this is what we're gonna do so the mind was right before i sought out the surgeon mm -hmm. and so that's how we came about but you know i, I can't say you know I, I i did it before so i've had weight loss surgery twice and this time i was mentally prepared i, well, I went I, in with god what i love about it is that you didn't just you know how some people this mind and that's it i'm gone you came back and said let me help you mm -hmm. because this is beyond uh uh, uh, you losing 20 or 30 pounds is sometimes just as difficult as losing 200. So you came back and you said you got to discipline yourself and right. you got to trust God to get you through it. Right. You got to pray up, you got to get in the word, you got to stay focused, and you have to deny your flesh. Right. And so uh, I like that you're coming back with the divinely one ministries to help others. Um, and tell us how you keep your weight off because I know people who've had this surgery who have gained it back right. and uh, so it's not like it's impossible to happen so that even proves even the more that you have to discipline yourself right most of all the number one thing is prayer because you can't do it without prayer uh, because we it's still like you said the addictions the, the the triggers there are certain things that can trigger it's just life stress certain things that can kick you right back into that cycle yes. it's a vicious cycle and you have got to break it but the uh, thing is is you can get in there and you can like I said with prayer first of all pray and apply yourself this is not what I'm going to do and 
the my trick is I don't deny myself anything. If I want a piece of cheesecake, I'm going I'm to have some cheesecake, but I'm not going to eat the whole doggone slice flat out. I can't eat the whole slice. But the thing is, when you deny yourself certain things as far as food, then, then that's when you tend to overeat, and then you then you go and you go and you go. That's but true. so if I want a cookie, I made a cookie. <laughs> that's it true. is what it is. That's right. But then I'm not going to follow it up with you know some right. bad taste of gravy. <laughs> I'm gonna just have a cookie and go and pray, and then you know. Uh, and other times when I decided that okay, I want a cookie now, I want some Snickers now, I want no, nope, I will go move furniture, exercise, just creative ways to to come up with getting your mind off of that addiction. Amen. That's beautiful and well said. Um, viewers, we have pictures of Pastor Iris before and after. And if you would take just a second to look at these pictures, it's unbelievable how God can do great and mighty things. That's why I just love him because it's so beyond any man's surgery. This had to be the handiwork of God. Pastor Iris, when you look at those pictures, what do you think? I don't know what to think. No, <laughs> I honestly <laughs> thank God that Amen. I'm not what I used to be. And uh, that's mental, physically, and all the way around. Amen. It's a whole, it's Amen. a whole, uh, uh, a whole entire makeover. Um, my children say that they don't remember me being that large. I think even you said you don't remember me being that large. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I remember me being that large. <laughs> and it, but it went so fast, I dropped that weight in less than 12 months. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I don't know. I just thank wow. God that we're, I just thank God for where I am today. Being a victim of abuse, mm -hmm. mental. Yes, mental, physical. Yes, not, phys not me physical, but my family suffered physical. Yes. So I was a, you still suffer if you see it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so mental, physical, and emotional abuse. Yes. Amen. And 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 God had brought you from addiction. Brought me from it. Addiction. From every aspect of the word. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. And, and and now it is is produced fruit in your life. The weight loss, yes. the spiritual growth, the mental strengthening of the mind. God is good. Amen. What can we say to some women that are struggling? What would you tell them? Look in the camera and give them some words of advice and pray for them, Pastor Iris. What I would like to tell you is that you don't have to live any old kind of way. Uh, you don't have to struggle. Uh, the struggle is over. I'm reminded of a song that simply says, I'm stronger, I'm better, I'm wiser. Mm -hmm. uh, God is your sustainer. He's your supplier. Hallelujah. And uh, there's a scripture, John 10 and 10, I've come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Live in the abundance of God Amen. and begin to walk and begin to move and breathe and in, in him. And he'll be able to, to show his glory and give his glory and you'll be able to give your testimony throughout that. Amen. 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 I just want to pray for you right now. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just give you thanks, God. We give you praise, God, because you're a mighty yes, God. Lord. God, we worship you because you're worthy of all glory. Yes, Father God, we thank you for the what we're going through, Father God, what we're going to go through. And, and and on this other side of this trial, Father God, we know that, the, that you're going to get the glory out yes. of everything that we go Thank through, Father you. God. And Father God, we just give it all to you, Father God. Any trial, any test, anything that's hindering us, yes, Father. Jesus. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, if it's not like you, Father God, take it from us right now yes, in the Father. mighty name of thank Jesus, you. Father God. We just thank you, God, because you're glorious Father, in our lives, Father God. We know that you're our sustainer. Yes. We know that you won't put any more on us than we can bear father god we thank you thank for you. allowing us to bear these burdens father god but we know that we can give them to you father god and you'll cast them away father god that we don't have to deal with them father god and we thank you father god thank for you, lifting father. our heads father yes, god Lord. in the name of jesus father god we thank, thank you, you for being the lifter of Hallelujah. our heads father god so that we can walk in you that we can live in you that we can have our very being in you Bless father god and we thank you that you've not given us a spirit of fear but you You've given us a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind, Father God. And we thank you for changing our minds. We thank you 
for renewing our yes, minds, Father, Father God, God, so that we might walk like you, we might yes, talk like you, Lord. Father God, we may strive to be Lord, like you, Father Lord. God, and we give your name the glory, yes, the honor, Lord, and the Jesus. praise, because we know that we can do all things Hallelujah. through you, Father God, because you are our joy, yes, Father God, you are, you are our strength, Father God, and we just give your name the praise you, right now in the mighty name of in Jesus, and Father God, we walk Jesus. today in our healing. Hallelujah. Father God, we walk in that Hallelujah. healing, and we walk in your glorious victory. Yes, Father God, we walk because we're victorious, Father God. We thank you thank for you, allowing Lord. us to be victorious in thank you, Father you, God. And we just give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise that is due you. Yes, in Jesus. Jesus' mighty name, we say thank God thank you, and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Iris, I know that a lot of our viewers are going to be helped about struggling with different various types of addiction today, but the food addiction for most women and men have been something that has bound us up, but we feel free now. Thank, Thank you, me. Lord, because of your testimony. Thank yeah. you for coming on Praise Grace for Me and sharing your testimony. Now, if they wanted to get in contact with you, because you helped so many women overcome uh, the desire to eat, and, and instead of eating, to turn to God. Will yeah. you give them your contact, please? Our contact information is Facebook slash Divinely One Ministries. You can also hit me on Twitter at Divinely One. Uh, and, and it's not just for women, it's for men too. Amen. Uh, men have the same struggles that we have with whether it be by food, low self-esteem, but we want you to hit us up, like the page, and uh, every day there's going to be something positive on there that's going to help you throughout your journey. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Grace For Me viewers. We're about to be favored with a selection from Pastor Iris Gray Divine. Remember I told you she was a psalmist as well. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, there is 
couldn't find no one. You've tried everything. You've done this, you've done that. Your education couldn't provide the inner peace that you needed. Having a great family won't do it. The greatest position won't do it. The doctors can't do it. A lawyer can't do it. Your friends can't do it. Family can't do it. The void that's in you can only be filled by Jesus Christ. The woman at the well, she was empty. She met Jesus at the well, and he said, the water that you drink, it will dry up. But this water I want to give you will flow into everlasting life. The Lord wants to give you everlasting life. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. There is none other way. If you would accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he will come in and sup with you. There's coming a time where Jesus will return for his church. The question today is, do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him? Have you received him into your heart? The Bible says we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. We shall be saved. We must believe that he is the son of God. It sounds like uh, that easy. Yes, it is, because we are saved by grace, not of our works, lest we should boast. This is the day that the invitation is extended to you. The Lord says, come to him. And if you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, it's simple. Just say this prayer with me. Father, I've sinned. Forgive me for my sins. I believe that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And I believe that he is the Son of God. Come in my heart and save me. I receive that and I believe him and accept him as my Lord and Savior. Satan, I renounce you and everything to do with you. Lord Jesus, have control of my life. Lead me and help me to learn kingdom business for your glory in Jesus' name, amen. If you have recited this prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ and meant it from your heart, the Bible declares you are saved because he said, if you will call on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. Come to Jesus now. And if you've done that, you are saved. God bless you.